More than 60 years since the Soviet era heyday, which saw a launching of the first dog and then the first man into space, Russia is now lagging behind global competitors old and new, all of which are embarking on a new race for the moon. The Russian hopes of once again entering a golden age of lunar exploration came crashing down, literally, into the moon last weekend, bringing home a bitter truth that its space program is not what it once was. Today, we're going to tell you the real cause behind this farce. The unmanned Lunar 25 launched earlier this month on a mission to be the first spacecraft to land on the moon's south pole, where scientists expect to find precious elements and suspected reserves of frozen water. Luna 25 did manage to capture imagery and data during its journey. However, it ultimately failed when the vehicle spun into an uncontrolled orbit and crashed into the surface of the moon on Saturday. Yuri Borisov of, Director General of Roscosmos, Russia's state space corporation, said the spacecraft's e engines were turned on over the weekend to put Luna 25 into a pre-landing orbit, but did not shut down properly, plunging the lander onto the moon. Before making adjustments, the spacecraft reoriented, and at 14.10, the engines were turned on, which were supposed to correct the course and lead the spacecraft to pre-landing orbit. Unfortunately, the engine shutdown did not occur normally in accordance with the cyclogram, but according to temporary cutoff. Borisov said in an interview that aired on the state station Russia 24, which was shared by Roscosmos. Instead of the planned 84 seconds, the engine worked for 127, he added. This was the main cause of the spacecraft's crash. He added that the engine burn had been previously tested on ground simulators, according to the interview. The negative experience of interrupting the lunar program for almost 50 years is the main reason for the failures. We have to essentially master all the technologies all over again, of course at a new technical level, Borisov said, adding, it would be the worst decision ever for Russia to end the program now. During the operation, an abnormal situation occurred on board the automatic station, which did not allow the maneuver to be performed with the specified parameters, Roscosmos also said in an English translation of a Telegram post. Luna 25's orbit was around 62 miles, or 100 kilometers, circular at 87 degrees inclination. A thruster firing by the moon-circling craft was set to lower it to 10 miles by 62 miles, or 16 by 100 kilometers, and the next phase would have been the landing burn to put it down on the surface from that 10-mile altitude. The inclination allowed Luna 25 to pass over the polar target area. The perigee lowering burn went on for too long, either through failing to shut down or through the engineers programming it wrongly. Space expert Bob Christie of the Informer and authoritative website, Orbital Focus, shared. It would have resulted in perigee below ground level. The time of the signal loss probably marks when it hit the surface. As for the Luna 25 failed attempt, Russia was probably starting from scratch in planning and executing this mission, as its experienced engineers from the 1970s had long passed retirement age. It wasn't a simple evolution of the previous lunar mission, Christie concluded. Notably, according to Brian Harvey, the traditional reaction to a serious failure Failure in the Russian and Soviet space program has been a punitive heads will roll approach and less funding. The deeper causes of the Lunar 25 failure goes back to the 1990s, Harvey continued, the period of chaos capitalism, when the whole space program almost collapsed. Russian space spending now lags far beyond the US, China, Europe, and even Japan, Harvey said. Space science suffered the most, he said, exemplified by the failed Roscosmos operated Mars 96 which also goes by Mars 8, mission, completed by Candlelight in an unheated hangar in winter. Apart from two successful observatories, Spectre-R and Spectre-RG, there have been hardly any scientific missions, Harvey said. Experience in running such complex missions is low, he said. Before all contact with Russia was cut off, European visitors to Moscow contrasted the situation of the Lavochkin Design Bureau with the more generously funded human spaceflight program run by the Energia and Progress Design Bureau. Possibly rightly so when human lives are at stake, Harvey pointed out. 
By contrast, meetings with Lavochkin took place not in the bureau, but in adjacent hotels. Not, it seemed, because of secrecy, but because underinvestment in the science program would be so obvious, Harvey said. Underfunding may be the real root of what went wrong. Russian state television gave just 26 seconds to the failed mission in its news broadcast, in a short item following news about fires in Tenerife, and a four-minute package about a professional holiday for Russian pilots and crews. Though ironic and kind of coincidental, still pretty understandable. It's an embarrassing setback for the nation that once commanded a world-leading space program at the height of the Cold War, launching the Sputnik 1 satellite to orbit the Earth in 1957, and four years later, claiming Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin as the first man to travel into space. More than six decades on, Russia's economy is shrinking in the face of ongoing Western sanctions over its continued war on Ukraine, which also prompted the European Space Agency to last year end its partnership with Russia on a rover mission to Mars. Russia's illegal invasion also triggered limits on its use of Western-made technology, funding, and research ties, with many Western space agencies ending their cooperation with Roscosmos. Analysts say Luna 25's mission, almost 20 years in the making, was meant to prove Russia could succeed without them. Sadly, this loss will now pile pressure on Russia's $2 trillion economy, particularly its high-tech sector as it grapples with Western sanctions aimed at punishing Moscow for the war in Ukraine. As some experts note, it's not a good look for Russia, which has fallen a long way in space exploration from the heights of the Soviet era. Following the crash of Luna 25, all eyes are now on ISRO's Chandrayaan-3. The Chandrayaan-3 mission was launched on July 14th from India's main spaceport in the southern state of Andhra Pradesh. Since then, it has looped through progressively wider-ranging orbits of Earth, transferred to a lunar orbit, and emerged as a focus of national pride and of global interest after Russia's failed attempt. The Chandrayaan-3 is also aimed at the lunar south pole, a region with water ice, or frozen water, that could be a source of oxygen, fuel, and water for future moon missions or a more permanent moon colony. If it lands successfully, the Chandrayaan-3 is expected to remain functional for two weeks, running a series of experiments including a spectrometer analysis of the mineral composition of the lunar surface. The Chandrayaan-3 lander stands at about 2 meters tall and has a mass of just over 1,700 kilograms, or 3,747.86 pounds, roughly on par with an SUV. It's designed to deploy a smaller 26-kilogram lunar rover. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said in a statement that the U.S. Space Agency was looking forward to what would be learned from the Indian mission. A successful mission would make India the fourth country to successfully land on the moon after the former USSR, the United States, and China, and marks its emergence as a space power just ahead of national elections next year. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government is also looking to spur investment in private space launches and related satellite-based businesses. India wants its private space companies to increase their share of the global launch market by fivefold within the next decade. Modi said when the moon mission launched that ISRO was writing a new chapter in India's space odyssey and elevating the dreams and ambitions of every Indian. And that's all folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.